Welcome to the Atlantic at Sundance. Uh, hello, I'm David Sims. I'm a staff writer at the Atlantic. Uh, and as some of you may know, the first virtual Sundance Film Festival is coming up next week. Uh, and throughout the festival, our culture team is going to be talking with key filmmakers and actors and some of the films premiering this year. But to kick off our coverage and to sort of chat about the current state of the film industry, uh, please welcome my colleague, fellow Atlantic staff writer, Shirley Lee. Hi, Shirley. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm 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 just fine. I, I'm looking forward to Sundance, but I am also I, I feel like we just have a lot to talk about in terms of the year in movies. What just mm -hmm. passed, you know, the, the strangeness of 2020 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how much 2021 is gonna look like that, uh, where <laughs> you have uh this sort of ongoing question of like if movie theaters are gonna return in full force or if it's gonna be this sort of slow process of building back up and mm -hmm. like what, what the landscape's gonna look like in terms of uh films getting released when they get released when when, when studios essentially start to sort of like go back in on a full force uh schedule and you know release strategy what what, what what are you thinking about 2021 so far? Right, I like that you said the strangeness of 2020 as if it's going to be over. Um, right. <laughs> I think, you know, anybody uh, who made any predictions last year about all the films that are coming into 2021, they, they're they probably kicking themselves thinking that mm -hmm. we'll have a regular schedule. Um, the regular sc schedule programming is probably going to change this year. I mean, here's the thing. Last year, when we saw all those films, those 10 polls being pushed into 2021, I think we had the sense that once 2021 came around, theaters would probably be opening up, people would be feeling a little more ready to go outside. Um, but obviously that hasn't changed. And the glacial pace of the vaccinations has made things slow down even further. Um, so right now it looks cluttered. That's that's where I am. <laughs> so yeah. if I sound stressed, it's because I am stressed looking at what's coming up <laughs> and uh, the release date shuffling that's going to happen again, presumably will be in the song and dance for another six months at least. Yeah, I, that sounds right. The summer seems like the, the earliest possible time that things could be something close to what we remember, like in terms of moviegoers. But it's weird because there's also studio by studio different strategies. Like there's the whole brouhaha uh, that Warner Brothers raised where they're gonna put their movies on HBO Max at the same time as uh, putting them in theaters. And then, you, you know, Disney is sort of like mostly promising to put stuff in theaters, but some of the stuff's gonna go to streaming. And so like, there's just no coherent strategy, which is understandable because there's no sort of way to predict how this is all going to go. Yeah, this is uh, unprecedented, David. Have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so like you look at the calendar and it's this sort of mix of, you know, for the 2021 season, it's this mix of stuff that was due out last year and has been pushed. And it's and some stuff that obviously was always planned for for 2021. And I, I really would bet no money on, on anything right now, but given that we're talking about Sundance, like the one thing about 2020 is Sundance 2020, last last one year from, you know, last January, was basically the last big uh, film festival that sort of proceeded as normal and so on. And those movies ended up dominating the whole conversation, like for yeah. the entire year, because they were the movies pretty much. And like there is, there's even still a couple sort of due out, like Minari, like, you know, movies from last mm -hmm. year. Uh, so like Sundance 2021, obviously it's virtual, it's, it's gonna proceed differently, but like it might end up being the same exact situation. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we've been having this conversation for a few years now where it's like streaming services just coming to dominate the film festival space in terms right. of snapping up whatever is hot, right? So last year, that's a great point. Last year, Palm Springs walked away with, I can't even remember what a lot the of buzz. Is now. Yeah, and it, it ended was like up, seventeen million dollars. Yeah, and something it kind like of that. ended up dominating summer movie season mm -hmm. <laughs> because it landed mm -hmm. on Hulu. I think we'll be seeing the same thing this year. I mean, as you mentioned, all the studios have very different contingency plans. You have. 
Disney with its own streaming service, right? You have Warner Brothers, as you as you put it, the brouhaha with uh, HBO Max. Um, and I think Universal has also had its own, uh, you know, plan of sorts with um, with theatrical releases and streaming. So you have a couple of you have a couple of studios with streaming plans. You have a couple of other studios like Sony and Paramount that have that have to figure out where they want to drop their movies. Right. So, you know, to sum all of this up, it's <laughs> streaming services are flexing like crazy right now. <laughs> flexing. For, yeah. for lack of a better term. I don't know. Did you see the um the did Netflix you see the thing? trailer? Yeah, that Netflix put out. I it did. Was, I mean, I think that might be <laughs> that might be where 2021 goes from here. People will head to Netflix, see their slate in its entirety, and for everybody else, it's it's a it's a coin toss. It depends on it's what you're this, comfortable with. Right. I mean, because obviously, there's when you're talking about streaming uh, movies, there there is a bit of a two tier come because there's Netflix just has this advantage that. Of a, of a huge subscriber base that's there, I mean, you know, their problem is always more just, you know, uh, getting eyeballs on the right things because there's just such a deluge of content on Netflix uh, versus these more fledgling, you know, like the HBO Max is the world, Peacock, except, you know, these new uh, services that are trying to make noise and get um, some airspace. And like, I think that's part of why Warner Brothers was so motivated to put movies on it this year to try and get, you know, get, you know that's why Wonder Woman uh, was it's sort of big Christmas thing and they, they, they want more things to go. But Netflix, Netflix is just in this entirely unique situation where they, they, they don't even need to really tell us what's coming out when, like, you know, the, the old classic Hollywood strategy of like, well, well, we'll put our markers down on the board throughout the year so that you know to, what to, where to avoid, you know, like, you don't want to put your Marvel movie against my James Bond, right? You know, like that, that sort of stuff. Netflix doesn't care about that. Netflix will put stuff out when it wants and it will sort of get attention in more of a rolling kind of like, you know, week by week, people will will catch up to things and things like that, mm -hmm. which I think is so hard for us as sort of movie analysts, like, you know, like business sort of analysts of, of this industry to understand. Yeah. Like it's, it's, such a, they, it's such a confusing thing. <laughs> They've made our jobs really hard, um, so. <laughs> So we could turn this whole conversation into a, a complaints hour. <laughs> but I will say another point I want to raise about Netflix, though, right? The, when you look at their slate, these are movies that were made to be Netflix movies. Mm -hmm. So they have been cognizant of from the beginning what the budget should be, how many eyeballs this will reach, what, you know, what the impact would be on a quantifiable end, even though, you know, when it comes to their viewership numbers, it's all it's all rather strange how they count it's household nebulous. viewership. Anyway, right. um, but looking at the slate that's been pushed back from 2020 for from major studios, these are films that have been expected to cross, you know, the one billion threshold, and they're not going to make that. So it's so I feel like for them, they're in this they're in this space of how much more money can we squeeze out of this, and if that means, you know, handing it over to the streaming service that we're trying to make more robust, maybe it's worth it. But I think what, what we haven't talked about yet is not just from our jobs perspective, but from uh, an audience <laughs> of film goers perspective. You know, I, I'm i really curious to see if people will be comfortable to go to theaters um, and right. how much people yeah. miss that experience. Personally, I miss it. I miss it a lot, obviously. I do think there's nothing like both the collective experience right being with other people and watching a movie can be very special but also just the the lack of distractions the fact that you have to you know sit and turn your phone off and sit in a dark room like these are underrated things that we you know these are um, the, the kind of mundane things we just haven't gotten to experience in a full year like that's that's how i feel about it i mean that <laughs> I have long kind of advocated like, no, people will want to go back because people are going to be desperate to get out of their house. And, mm -hmm. you know, the minute they can, they're going to be more excited than ever. And the only, obviously in the summertime, there was the whole thing where, you know, Tenet and, you know, a few big movies got put out last summer and underwhelmed because people just were not ready to go back in the theater. 
the the thing that sort of surprised me is that and it's not like wonder woman did exceptionally well in, in from a box office perspective uh on christmas but it made money people did go and and it was a thing that was available at home so there was clearly some design people do want to like take their families out you know right they do want to mm -hmm. have the experience even in these very stressful times so like i think it's sort of a like in theory people will go back it's really just a matter in practice of like can these businesses stay solvent can they kind of like survive however many more months they are going to need to survive you know like and and when they when they can reopen in full like do they need to sort of change anything about the mm -hmm. service they offer i don't know Right. Yeah. I mean, look, historically speaking, theaters have gone through a pandemic as well a hundred years ago. They've also gone through sure. world wars. They've gone through, you know, the rise of VHS <laughs> and the yes, subsequent yes, downfall. Um, <laughs> so, so if you were to bet, then yeah, theaters will stick around and people love that experience. I think it, it'll just take some time. I know that, you know, for me, personally speaking, it's like attending these virtual festivals, um, hooking, uh, you know, things up to my Wi Fi and trying mm -hmm. to make that work. It's, you know, it's a, it's a cover charge that I don't have to pay <laughs> um, when I'm going to see a movie in person. Uh, I'm talking pre pandemic, obviously. Yeah. I'm thinking back to last year's Sundance and the experience, just the communal experience of watching a film, um, a good film. And yeah. uh, I mean, that's something that you can't replace from your living room. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I mean, the thing about yeah. a virtual festival is like the, the, the huge advantages. I mean, I sort of experienced this with Toronto last year. Now Sundance is doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the huge advantage that's, that's very nice is like, access you know people all over can buy some tickets and like check stuff out and like you don't have to travel and you don't have to uh put down lots you know wait in long lines and all that you know like that, that so that's that's great and that's the sort of like unique charm of this weird situation we're in but like you say like there is nothing especially with a film festival especially without something like sundance where no one has seen a movie yet perhaps like i remember palm springs last year being in line and everyone's sort of chattering about like, I hear there's like some twist with this thing. I, I don't know what, you know, and then everyone getting to experience it and say, you know, that's a very magical experience uh, that I'm sure everyone at these festivals, you know, is eager to return to. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of, I think there's a lot about the virtual festival experience that's at least democratic in, you know, and that, that, that should be nice and like hopefully these movies can, you know, get some eyeballs all over the world, like, and that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on the movie itself. Uh, you know, I feel like with some of the films I'm looking forward to this year, I really wish I were in the room with a lot of other people. So while we're walking out of the film, I can also talk about it. Um, yeah. And then some other ones where it's like, oh, this is going to be an intimate look at some, you know, family tragedy. Then, yeah, I, I would prefer to just cry alone on my couch and then see what everyone says on Twitter after. Sure, um, right. Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, yes. I guess, brings us to, yeah, what are you looking forward to? This year? Yeah, what are you looking mm -hmm. forward to, Shirley? I mean, mm -hmm. I did a, a, a movie preview at The Atlantic, you know, of, of, all, of some you know big movies to look forward to mm -hmm. with the caveat of like you know we're all hoping that we finally get to see like the top gun sequel come july 4th weekend <laughs> right or uh mm -hmm. you know dune in in october the like the long you know these long delayed things but no i don't know what else are you looking forward to this year <laughs> no time well no time yeah. to die to me that's the the, 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 the now year-long canary in the coal mine i don't know if i've mm -hmm. given you this rant but like you, you know, it was due out some, in, yeah. But go right, for it. It was due out spring 2020. It was the first big movie to get kicked down the schedule right when things were starting to get bad. And everyone, I remember the reaction at the time being like, oh my gosh, like November, is that really necessary? You know, and now it's like obviously got kicked again to spring 21. I imagine it's going to get kicked again, probably back to the fall of 20. You know, like that's the movie where it's like, obviously, its studio and its producers want it to be seen in a big screen with lots of people uh it's it's a theater movie right like the whole the last daniel craig james bond movie 
And mm -hmm. so like, that's the movie where you'll know that there's confidence of like, okay, this can get a global audience, like when it, whenever it actually comes out. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I feel about Fast 9. <laughs> Fast 9, that's another one, right. Yeah, will, yeah. That, will we get that this spring? I don't know. You then know, it's, who knows? <laughs> I, it's funny because, mm -hmm. it, you, you know, th there's this glut of, which, you know, much, much debated glut of franchise films and, you know, this studio emphasis on superheroes and on sequels and on remakes and things like that. And now I'm just sort of like, please, you know, the, the I, please get them out in theaters. That'd be great. Like anything to, to sort of mm -hmm. get some health back to this industry is a good thing. Well, especially these movies that were made with, again, giant budgets and were meant to be seen on the huge, you know, huge screens with surround sound. I know we, we mentioned Tenet earlier. I saw that at a mm. drive-in theater and the sound mm. is shaky mm. and horns are honking and the, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> the sunset is beautiful, but it's really, you know, screwing with the lighting. Um, so it's not the best environment to watch a, a film in um, no. of that uh, <laughs> of that nature. Um, but then going back to Sundance, though, these are not necessarily films that, you know, yes, we would prefer to see them in a theater. We would love to see them in, on a huge screen. But these are mm -hmm. all, these, these tend to also be a little bit more intimate. Um, so you know, maybe you don't need the the whole <laughs> uh, surround sound nature <laughs> of, of no. huge theaters. But um, anyway, going back to what we're looking forward to this year, as far as Sundance goes, I, I know I want to see um, I want to see John in the Hole, <laughs> which caught my eye <laughs> immediately. We, we when both I was talked running. about this. It yeah. just just in terms. I mean, look with Sundance, it's always this sort of fun. Uh, game of like, you know, obviously you're looking for artists, you might recognize actors or directors, you might recognize. Sometimes there's a premise where you're just like, wait, 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 wait. it's about a guy who puts his family in a hole or something? Like, that's no. that's all I got? To, 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 that sounds cool. David, like, no, you need no. to sell this the way it's meant to be sold. Okay, it's go ahead, a, go ahead. It's a quote, non-traditional coming of age story. Sure. So the son in the family puts the family in the hole. Mm -hmm and presumably right, learn so. things about himself and his family I, from you know the, <laughs> this is the thing about the the year in movies and mm -hmm. it's hard to know the year we're going to get but I, ha I i i am very excited that there are new movies like not that i'm not excited to see a james bond movie that has been essentially in the can for 18 months now or whatever you know but i I'm just very excited that movies are still being made. I know it's very complicated and strange process to make movies right now, but like that creativity is still being indulged that like, you know, people are still putting up money for this, like that the medium still obviously that there's faith in the long-term viability of the medium and all that like that. So you're telling me about John and the whole like, or, or other Sundance movies. I'm like, it's, it's great that there's just this, you know, creativity still flowing. Yeah, absolutely. Even though this yeah. is a truncated Sundance. Um, yes, of course, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah, we're uh, still, I mean, I think on my list, I've, I've got 19 movies I'm going to be watching. Um, wow. Humble. I've got to make my list. Wow, you're ahead of me. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, uh, some strange premises. And then, uh, you know, like you mentioned, actors who are, you know, presenting their directorial debuts and then kind of excited to see where their career goes from there a couple mm -hmm. of things like Rebecca Hall is directing a film called Passing Robin Wright is directing a film called Land mm -hmm. um, and then there are some great documentaries there's uh, I mean I'm saying great as if I know if they're yep. actually going to be great but they're just ones but I'm looking forward to <laughs> Sundance prescribed all kinds of great you know I mean sorry mm -hmm. premiered all kinds of great documentaries last year like mm -hmm. that had a big impact throughout the year like often mm -hmm. is sort of just on a pulse in a way that you don't even predict, you know, in terms of what the news is going to be over the next year. Anyway, look, there's lots to look forward to. <laughs> and to read more of our stories and to subscribe to The Atlantic, you can please visit theatlantic.com slash culture, where my writing, Shirley's writing, all our great team's writing is. And uh, you can check out more of our coverage of Sundance right here on The Atlantic's YouTube page and at the Sundance Film Festival's uh, virtual Main Street. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you.